What's up guys, so today we're going to study about color science and uh, tomorrow I have computer graphics exam so we are going to have quite a great time together with these lectures and uh, we will be discussing some questions together. So to start with what is color? Now the main thing about whenever you're going to come across color science you need to understand energy, that is light energy. So when it comes to light energy, light energy is made up of a certain wavelength and a certain frequency. And what I call to be light energy is known as a transverse wave. And if you have studied physics, you know that transverse wave are linked using V is equal to F lambda. So I must say directly that light energy is directly related to wavelength and frequency. Right? So light energy is made up of photons. Now, where does color come from? So I classify these as two sources, half prism, and second is the light energy. If you take a prism and you strike maybe some light on it or maybe any other sources of light energy, it will be refracted. And what is meant by refracted is change of speed. And if you have studied physics again, V is equal to F lambda. Since there is a change in speed, there must be a change in frequency or wavelength. And since there is a change in speed, we can presume that there will be a change in frequency or a change in wavelength. And whenever there is a change in wavelength, I have said different wavelength, different frequency will give rise to different colors. Right? So that is why I quoted that. Light energy varies directly with frequencies. The higher frequency, the greater is going to be the energy level. Now, the electromagnetic spectrum, you have all the waves in it, like uh, you have microwave, you have radio wave, all of these. But among these, we have visible light, which has a wavelength of 10 power minus 6. Now, yes, that's great about color science. We're going now to deep inside biology a bit. So the main thing to understand is the human eyes is divided into cones and rods. And uh, given that there is a specific low intensity of light, it will be captured by rods. And if there is a high intensity of light, it will be captured by cones. So whenever the human eye is going to absorb a certain uh, amount of light energy, it will be normally captured by either the rods or the codes. Now, codes has a perception of any three colors. Depending on what color it is, red, green, blue, red and green can be mixed to give us a certain amount of color. Right? And uh, blue and green may be mixed to give us a certain amount of color. It doesn't mix on its own. It's a human brain. Amazing, right? So, let's take a whiteboard for example now. A whiteboard may appear, two whiteboard, one may appear whiter and one may appear less whiter compared to the first one. What is the main difference? Now, there are other factors like size and all this, but one important thing about it is any material is made up of atom. And whatever you see around over here, it may absorb a certain amount of light, it may refract a certain amount of light, it may reflect a certain amount of light, and it may scatter a certain amount of light, or it may not do anything at all. Now these are color models, so we have the RGB, the CMY, CMYK, and the HSD color, which we are going to discuss in much more detail. So what is a color model? So a color model is used to describe the property and then the behavior of a color in a particular context. For example, the UNI can be described in terms of the RGB system, right? Color model, CMY for printing purposes, CMYK for printing purposes. HSV can be used in any context, you know, like uh, for example, you can play with the U, you can play with the saturation, which is known as purity of the color, how much purity it is. And uh, V, we are going to say it's value or most probably brightness or lightness. Now, coming to the RGB colors, we have two types of those RGB colors. One is additive primaries. When I talk about additive primaries, these colors are actually coming from the light energy directly. That is red, green, and blue. Now, we can produce cyan, we can produce magenta, we can produce yellow. The basic term is cyan, magenta, and yellow can be classified as CMY RGB bit system. So how to make it classified to the RGB bit system? It's very simple. Right, so this is a paintbrush, Microsoft paintbrush. So initially red, green and blue are all 
uh, at zero level and if I just try to move on each of these color by one that's completely going to give me white right because there is a high intensity of red high intensity of green and a high intensity of blue let me remove one of them that's going to produce cyan let me put this and remove this one magenta this to the highest intensity subtract completely the blue yellow right and absence of all these colors read black this means there is no specific intensity of this color right so very simple and there is a way to remember these bits values assume that 255 uh, when represented by the bit 1 and 0 is represented as a bit 0 right that is zero value the subtractive color model the CMY color model so we can take those colors and subtract them so this is the main formula for doing it so actually you have to just move on CMY is going to be 111 minus the RGB color value right so let's come over here again so cyan normally you write down C M Y and that's going to be 011 one. magenta is going to be 101 one, one one. how to do it is just shift this bit over here uh, to 101 one. easily you're going to get it right so that's it now we come to the C M Y we come to the C M Y color model so how to get C M Y color bits so one thing that you have to remember, so these are two color wheels, we're going to see how they are arranged. So this is for Ubuntu, how it arranges it. Uh, so CMY color can be obtained by taking the RGB bits and minusing it with 111. Similarly, to get RGB, you just make RGB subject of formula and send CMY on the next uh, part of it. Now, the main condition is known as under color removal. Now, if you mix all the, all the C and the M and the Y, it should be producing black. But it doesn't produce black, but something brown. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove a certain amount of these black, which is represented by K. So this is called as under color removal. Now, the most important part is coming to you, saturation and value. When it comes to you is actually what we are going to talk about is the color that we are talking it's the dominance of the frequency of light the dominance of the wavelength when I say dominance of the wavelength if the wavelength is for example uh, 10 power minus 6 or something like this uh, for a specific color it will be representing that specific color in fact the U it represents a specific color from 0 to a specific amount of, uh, of uh, angle that you can normally learn about so Based on a resource on the net, if you go through it, uh, it should be giving you normally as a color wheel value. And uh, that will be, for example, 0 to 45 degrees red or something like this, right? So brightness, when I talk about brightness, so it doesn't relate anything, no saturation, no value. The brightness is just intensity. And somehow you can relate it to energy. But when it comes to saturation, saturation is a dominance, or we can say purity, is a dominance of you. Right? Is a dominance of you. We can talk about how many grayscale. We're going to see that in some minutes. Otherwise, value can be classified as brightness. So there is an additional note that we are going to see about U saturation, because it's this part is quite confusing and uh, becomes very difficult. So when it comes to HSV color model, so we can talk about HSV as normally the U saturation and value. Now what is U? When I talk about U is most probably about color, right? So U is a name of a distinct color of the spectrum that is red, green, yellow and orange and blue and so on. So it is a particular wavelength of frequency. Like I told you it's just the dominance of wavelength and just the dominance of frequency. Saturation is a purity of that color. Saturation refers to the amount of white light or gray paint with mixed with the U. The U is normally the color. Pastels, 
or less saturated colors, right? So normally it's less saturated colors. Both of these samples below have a U, we would call blue, but the saturation is different. Right? I don't know where it is. Yeah. So that blue is more saturated than this blue. In fact, it's not the color that is dominating here. It's a pretty other color. This is a pure blue. This is a less pure blue. So you cannot say dominance of U in, in the color. No, it's not that. You can say it's somehow like dominance of the color, but it's just the purity of the color. Right? The purity of the color. And we're not referencing to any light energy here. Right? Now, you can have a light source that is producing a certain amount of color. Right? So even that light source can be less pure. Now, when it comes to value, value is amount of lightness, intensity, or a specific brightness of a color. So how much light is there in the color, right? How much brightness is there in the color? And how many of these intensity of light are present, right? So like I said, brightness is normally intensity of light. So these are range, so you can go for paintbrush and investigate about you. So here you will see luminance is classified as this. Now let's take, for example, this green, right? Normally, you will see that the luminance, the brightness here is. So if you place normally it is maximum value is 240 here for luminance. And uh, U is a specific amount of color. So let's change this to 240. Normally it's somehow like a white, right? Now let's place it 200. Now you will see luminance is too high. Let's put it 30. And uh, let's try to normally now change this to 56, 240. Maximum value. So if you try to remove a certain amount of luminance in it. So what you remark is the color will tend to be white. So the more amount of luminance, the darker the color be, right? And what about saturation? Let's say I am at this color, right? Now I play with the saturation, let's say 200. You will see that the wheel is somehow decreasing. If I say 117, the wheel is still decreasing. So it's somehow like a gray, gray matter that is appearing. So here you see that if you remove and place zero, it's completely gray. But once I place a certain amount of gray to that, it's going to be complete red. And U is color. So saturation is the amount of gray scale that you have in it. Or we can say purity of that color, how much purity is according to backup. So thanks for watching guys and coming next the lecture will be on color displays.